Okay then, so now we have a basic template set up which looks something like this in the browser. Now the first real step in making a progressive web app, in taking our app and making it progressive so to speak, is to create a web app manifest file. Now this is a single JSON file which is going to provide information about our app to the browser. Things like the name of the application or the home screen icon for mobiles or a color theme or something else like that. So that the browser can take all this information and it's going to know then how to display our app properly on a mobile when it's installed onto it. Because remember, progressive web apps can be installed onto a mobile just like a regular native app can be. So let's create now this web app manifest file. To do that, I'm going to do it in the root of the project down here. And we're going to call this manifest.json. That name is compulsory. The browser is going to look for this file right here. So then let's now start to flesh out this manifest. Remember, it's a JSON file, so I'm going to open up my object. And then we're going to do a property, first of all, called name. Now, this value right here is going to be the name of your app. And it's what's going to show when you click on the application on the splash screen while the application loads on a mobile. So I'm just going to call this Food Ninja, like so. OK, so the next property is going to be the short name. So short underscore name. And this is similar to name, but this is going to be the name that displays underneath the icon on the home screen when someone installs your application. So I'm just going to call this Food Ninja without a space, so much shorter. OK, the next property is going to be the start underscore URL. And this is going to be the page that actually opens up when a user taps on the icon when we install it onto the home screen. So when they tap that, what page do I want to show up? Well, I want to show this index page. So I'm going to say forward slash index.html. So that's going to be the page now that loads up. Next, I want to do a property called display. And this can be a few different properties. I'm going to say standalone. Now, what this means is that I want the application to look like a native app when it opens. Now, instead, we could use browser like that. And that means that when a user taps on the icon, it's going to open up the application in a browser, much like Google Chrome. But by saying instead standalone, it's not going to show all the browser things in the application, things like the address bar at the top, because it's going to look like a native app. And that's what I want. So the next property is going to be the background color. So background underscore color. And this is going to be a hex code, which I'm just going to write out. It's F F E nine D two. That's like an orangey color. So then this is going to be the background of the splash screen when we first load the application up. The next thing that we're going to do is another one called theme color. So theme underscore color. And again, this is going to be a hex code, which I'm just going to type in. So F F E one C four, a similar orange color. And this is going to colorize the little bar at the top of the application. So just a nice little extra to make it look a little more like a native app. Then the next property I'm going to do is going to be the orientation. So orientation. And this is going to dictate in what orientation your app opens. So I'm going to say portrait hyphen primary, which means it's going to open up in portrait mode. Then I want to do a property called icons. Now, this is going to be an array of objects and each object represents a different icon. Now, we're going to provide several different icons in this array. And the idea is that depending on the device that you're installing the app on, then it's going to use a different sized icon. So the iPhone might use one particular icon, the iPad something else, a Nexus something else, uh, a Samsung something else, etc. So it's always a good idea to provide several different size icons. Now, I've already created these icons. I've already placed them inside my image folder inside another folder called icons down here. So you can see I've got loads of different sizes here. 72 by 72, 96, 1 to 8, 1 for 4, etc. Increasing in size. And if I click on one of these, we can see this is what the icon looks like right here. So if you want to get these, you can just go to my GitHub repo over here. Make sure you choose the lesson three branch and go to image 
and icons and you'll be able to see all of these different icons right here if you want to create your own icons make sure you at least make them in these different sizes as a bare minimum you can do more sizes i've just done these sizes for now okay so that when we open it up on a different device the device can choose the size that it's nearest to that it needs for that device and use that so you can just click on each one of these and right click and save each one separately or you could instead go to clone or download on branch three lesson three and download the zip to download the code for all of this lesson so once you've done that put them into the image folder and what we're going to do is create an object now for each individual icon inside this folder so this object is going to have three properties in itself the first one is going to be the source so where is the icon stored well it's going to be forward slash image to go into the image folder first of all forward slash icons to go into the icons folder then the name of the icons themselves so this first one is going to be icon and then it's hyphen 72 x 72 png okay so that's the path or the source of the first icon make sure you spell this correctly the next property inside this object is going to be the type property and the type of this icon is going to be an image forward slash png and then the third property is going to be the sizes property and that is going to be 72 times 72 and again make sure you write 72 and not 7z 72 times 72 okay so that is our first object right there our first icon so we now need to do a separate object for each individual icon down here so what i'm going to do is write these out but i'm going to speed it up in the editing so that you don't have to watch me write every single one out from scratch okay then so now we've written out a new object for each individual icon inside the icons folder so this is all done now the next thing we need to do is link to this manifest.json file from our different html files so go over to index.html first of all and just up here what i'm going to do underneath the script is do a new link tag and the rel property over here is not going to be style sheet it's going to be manifest and the href is going to be forward slash manifest.json okay so we need to do that in each of the html files so let me save this one then go to about and we'll place that in here the same place and then contact as well right there okay so now we've done that if we go over to preview this over here in the browser then if we refresh and you want to go to application up here and then manifest then we're going to see this app manifest down here and we can see all of the different properties that we have provided now you can see right here it says display property it must be set to standalone full screen or minimal ui so maybe i've made a typo right there let me go back to manifest.json and just go up so let me say oops it's not display it, it's display and standalone is absolutely correct so let me save that now and now we get rid of that little error the other one says service worker is not registered or does not control the start url that we specified right here this start url don't worry about that yet we're going to talk about service workers later on for now we can see that the browser has taken this app manifest file and it's got all the information from it the name the short name the presentation information and the icons as well down here so that kind of verifies that our web app manifest file down here is correctly set up so now our browser can take all that information and when we install this onto a mobile device it can make sure that our app displays properly now there are other different properties that we can specify on this manifest.json file i'm not going to go through all of them but i will leave a link to this guide by google down below which goes through all of these different properties that you can have because there are some extra ones but for now i think that is good enough for what we need to do now just one word of warning as well the web app manifest is not supported in every single browser chrome supports it and now safari on ios partially supports it too other browsers don't fully support it but work is being done to roll out the support in the future but anyway now we've taken our first step in turning our regular web app into a progressive web app in the next video what i want to do is show you how we can 
preview this on an Android emulator on our computer and install this onto the home screen.